Now these descendants of Abraham bore many children, and the land of Egypt was filled with them. But a new Pharaoh, who did not remember Joseph, began to worry. He told the Egyptians, Behold, the children of Israel, these Hebrews, now outnumber us. We must deal wisely with them. If we let them continue to multiply and we become involved in a war, they might join our enemies and fight against us. So the Egyptians turned the Hebrews into slaves. The brutal slave masters made the lives of the children of Israel bitter with impossibly hard work. But the more they were mistreated, the more they grew in number. Then Pharaoh summoned the Hebrew nurses and told them, When you act as midwives for the Hebrew women, let their daughters live. But all newborn sons you must kill. One Hebrew mother hid her newborn son, but after three months could no longer conceal him. So she laid her baby in a basket covered with tar and placed it in the reeds by the river's bank. When Pharaoh's daughter came down to bathe at the river, she saw the basket among the reeds, and she looked inside. When she saw the baby and he cried, she felt compassion toward him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. She took the baby and raised him as her son, calling him Moses, which means drawn out of the water. So Moses became destined to inherit the Egyptian kingdom with all of its treasures. After Moses was grown, he went out among his Hebrew relatives who were all in bondage. As he observed their hardships, he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew slave. When Moses thought no one was looking, he killed the Egyptian and hid his body in the sand. But Pharaoh heard about the Egyptian's death and went after Moses to kill him. So Moses fled and lived in the land of Midian. After 40 years, that Pharaoh died. The children of Israel groaned under their slavery, and their cry rose up unto God. So God set about to honor his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob.